Hello, hello, all of you beautiful people around the world. My name is Ryan, a.k.a. Say it with me, Blackbeard TCG. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day, and if not, hopefully I can make it a little bit better. Now, look, in today's video, I'm bringing you guys the complete Rebecca Guide. Yes, the complete Rebecca Guide, similar to what I did in the past for Whitebeard, similar to what I did in the past for Smoker. Rebecca is here. I talked about it a little bit earlier, one of my videos last week, where I said that OPO4 is the best time for people to get into the game. And so if anybody is getting into the game and is gonna be picking up OPO4, one of the new leaders, Rebecca, is a great place to start. Right off the bat, I just wanna let you guys know that if this is the first time that you guys have stumbled across my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And you know what? make it even better hitting that like button hitting that subscribe button 60% of the people that are watching my content are not subscribed guys my goal is 4k subscribers by OPO4 we got 3k by OPO3 I want 4k by OPO4 if 60% of you guys hey hey man 60% of you guys aren't subscribed so go ahead hit that subscribe button run up that number run it up let's hit 4k for OPO4 but with that being said let's get into the complete Rebecca guide Timestamps down below for your viewing pleasure because I respect your time. To kick things off, let's talk about Rebecca herself. She's 5,000 power, 5 life, dual colored, blue and black. She is one of the first leaders to be released in the One Piece card game that has 5 life being a dual color leader. Typically up until this point in OP01 all the way till OP03, any dual color leader had 4 life as a drawback. Rebecca's drawback since she has 5 life is that this leader cannot attack. So it's quite interesting, right? You're pretty used to attacking with any leader in the game, and now you play with Rebecca. Of course, you played Iceberg, but who played him, right? So why is she good, right? Why should you play her? Well, let's read her effect. Every single turn, you can activate this ability once per turn for the cost of one Dawn. You rest that Dawn. If you have six or less cards in your hand, look at the top two cards of your deck, reveal up to one Dress Rosa type card, and add it to your hand, then trash the rest. Now, this ability is perfect. There quite literally is almost no downside. The only downside you could say is the fact that you have to pay one Dawn to use this ability, but the ability is so powerful. Why is it so powerful? We're gonna break down all the cards a little bit later, but let's talk about it on a surface level. How Dress Rosa wants to play, how Rebecca wants to play, is she wants cards in her trash. Utilizing this ability gives her two advantages. She gets to add a card to her hands. Drawing a card in this game is very powerful. Whether you're searching, whether you're hard drawing it off your leader ability, whether you're taking it from life, an extra card is an extra resource. So the fact that you could do that once every single turn, including on your very first turn, you know, some leaders, you guys know I'm a crocodile enjoyer, you go first, Hey man, you have no turn one plays. You're not playing Blocker Trafalgar Law turn one, right? You know, obviously there's some matchups, but typically in this meta, you're not gonna do that. Maybe if you're playing an Impel Down Engine, you might throw down a buggy. But outside of that, you have no turn one play, so you pass, right? Rebecca's a blue leader. Hey, I have no turn one play, no problem. I didn't see my other Rebecca. I use my leader ability and maybe I'll draw into it, right? Maybe I play my stage, who knows? Rebecca allows you to draw an extra card on your first turn, which is very good. Whether you're going first or second because it's six cards or less. So if you go second, you draw that card, you could still activate Rebecca. But the second part is that the other card goes to your trash, which is completely fine. As I talked about, it's one of Rebecca's advantages because some of her powerful cards require wire cards to be in the trash in order for them to pop off so it's two birds one stone this ability at first when you look at it you're like ah oh, she can't attack but then when you guys see the rest of the cards and the game plan behind rebecca herself you realize that this ability is very powerful so you're probably wondering ryan why play this deck? Why play Rebecca? There's going to be other new leaders in this set. There's old leaders that I want to play as well. Why are you telling me to pick up Rebecca? Why should my new friend that's coming to the One Piece card game pick up Rebecca? Well, it's quite simple. For me, I'm going to be keeping it real with you guys. Rebecca's not a deck that you could just turn your brain off and high roll and just auto play the deck. It, it's not. I'm just going to be completely honest. It's a deck that requires skill and it requires thinking and as little misplays as possible. And of course, there's going to be somebody that says, Oh, but Ryan, every deck needs as little misplays as possible. You guys know what I mean. This is a deck that is very unforgiving. And so again, you're probably saying, All right, Ryan, you're not really selling the deck on me. Why should I pick up Rebecca? I truly believe that this deck is extremely rewarding 
and it is going to make you a better player if you're an existing player, somebody that's played from maybe just last set or even from the beginning, because again, it has a different play style, or if you are a new player. The fundamentals that it will teach you are very, very important. And so because of that, I think Rebecca is a great leader to start playing if you're going to be start playing in OPO4 or if you were a previous player in any of the previous sets, it's a great leader to kind of spice it up if you're kind of bored with some of the old stuff. And, you know, the, the matchup against Zoro is not too bad. Maybe you're tired of seeing the Zoros. Well, you can go ahead and pick up Rebecca as well. Let's talk about Monkey D. Luffy from OPO4, Gear 4th Monkey D. Luffy, before we get into the intricacies of the deck in terms of all the different cards in the build. 7 cost, 7,000 power, and it's quite interesting because this is a character that can attack other active characters. During your main once per turn, you can send back 7 cards from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order and set this character to active. What does this mean? This means that you can attack with this card. When you attack with a card in the One Piece card game, the card gets rested. You send 7 cards back to the bottom of your deck, he refreshes, and you can now attack with him again. Set this character to active, as we discussed. Then, during your next refresh phase, this character cannot be set to active, so he's frozen. So you get to swim twice, but then on your next turn, he does not get refreshed. He does not get to stand again once you start your next turn. You have to leave him rested. So essentially, you're trying to jump ahead, right? You get two swings, but then you take the L on the clap back, right? Now, that being said, if you can pop off with him with that double attack, you can very easily end the game. Now, of course, you're probably looking at the stat line, 7,000 power, 7 cost. You know, if your opponent has blockers up, then quite easily this Monkey D. Luffy can just get blocked, right? If you block one of the attacks, all of a sudden it's not that scary, it's not that special, but... There's a couple of other things that we need to discuss in Rebecca and what makes this card so potent and we'll go over that when we go over the deck list. But for now, I just want you to know that this is going to be your main go-to card when you're trying to close out games and you have multiple ways of having it in your hand and digging for it. We already talked about our leader ability allowing us to draw a card. So you're going to have the opportunity to search for this, but then also your leader ability is going to allow you to set up your trash in order to use the double attack for this character. As I mentioned, Rebecca works perfectly for this type of card. This is your main card, so get ready to see it a lot. The next card that I would like to talk about before we get into the entire deck list is King Kong Gun. Now, King Kong Gun, <laughs> let's just read it, shall we? Up to one of your Dressrosa type cards gain 6,000 power. Yes, that is 6 0. Then, if you have 15 or more cards in your trash, that card gains double attack. What does this mean? This means that your Monkey D. Luffy has double attack and gets 6,000 power. We already talked about how it has a stat line of 7,000. This brings it up to 13k. Let's keep diving a little bit further. So it's 13k with double attack and it can swing twice. So say you play it on curve, right? Say you play your 7 cost Luffy on curve. Your next turn, say you have 9 Dawn, you can King Kong Gun, that's 3 out of your 9 Dawn, leaving you with 6 Dawn. You now have a 13k beater in which you can put 6 more Dawn on him and try to lethal that way or continue to just do other plays. Of course, that's just a scenario you can do. But with that being said, it's the fact that you can do it is what makes this so special. This is something that can always be a threat as the game gets to that mid to late game stage. So you have to be cognizant of this if you're going up against Rebecca. And if you're playing Rebecca, being able to hit this feels so damn good as you will see later on in this video. Again, get used to comboing these cards a lot. Now the thing is with King Kong Gun is that you don't always have to use it on Luffy. Keep that in mind. Remember, it's up to one of your just Rosa type characters. So if you have any of your other characters and you're trying to close out the game given the game state, feel free to use your King Kong gun. It's completely fine. Ideally, of course, if you want to use it with Luffy, that's fine. But if you're saving it only for that, then unfortunately, you're kind of playing the deck wrong. Take your advantages where you can. And if you can get that nice Luffy King Kong gun combo, then definitely pull it off. Because like I said, it feels so damn good. As per usual, let's go ahead and break down all of the cards that are in the Dressrosa archetype that you could choose to play in Rebecca. Now, first and foremost, you guys have to remember Rebecca is blue and black. 
One of the greatest things about Rebecca, though, is the fact that basically everything that you're going to play in the actual deck itself, which you'll see in the deck list, is these cards right here, you know, except for one card, which, again, we'll talk about a little bit later. So, again, this is why it's perfect for you guys to just jump in right away, because everything that you need is in this set, and you guys can just pick up the singles if you would like. And, of course, if you guys want to pick up the singles, go ahead and check out opsingles.com. Link is in the description. Use discount code BBTCG for 5% off your order but with that being said let's go to let's go ahead and i'm stumbling on my words i'm talking too fast because i'm too excited but i do this on one take let's go ahead and take a look at all of the dress rosa cards let's take a look at bellamy he is in blue and you're not gonna play him so we don't need to really harp on that he's just vanilla don't worry you're not playing him ideo is going to be a chump blocker two cost two thousand power one k blocker and he's a blocker not one k blocker one k counter and he's a blocker right standard straightforward a lot of archetypes have it Let's go into something that is a little bit more interesting and break it down. Or Lumbus. So, why are Lumbus, right? What does his ability do? Activate main once per turn. Four cost, 5,000 power, by the way. Give one of your opponent's characters minus four to their cost during this turn. Trash two cards from the top of your deck. Then KO one of your dress rosa type characters. I know, that, that was a lot, but let's break it down. And you guys will see the broader picture overall. So, first and foremost, you give one of your opponent's characters minus four to this to their cost this turn. Why is that important? As you guys know, with black, you can KO things based on their cost, right? It's just part of the archetype type of black. It's just what they do, right? If something is cost four, you can pop it. If something's cost two or less, you can pop it, right? That's just what black does. So, having our Lumbus minus four is very, very powerful. But you have to trash two cards from the top of your deck in order to utilize it. So, you know, it's kind of a negative. Or is it? We already talked about how Rebecca wants cards in her trash. We talked about Monkey D. Luffy a little bit earlier about being a character that wants that card in the trash in order to pop off. Or maybe King Kong Gun where you want to have 15 cards in the trash. So all of a sudden, that downside of trashing two cards from the top of your deck is now advantageous because it's allowing you to reach the game state that you want. Okay, so that's two benefits. So then the last line is a downside, right? KO one of your Dress Rosa type characters. So obviously if he's the only character on board, he gets KO'd. And this is not a May ability. You know how it says you may? It doesn't read this on that card. It specifically says then KO one of your Dress Rosa characters. So something has to die, okay? If you don't have any other character on board, you're Lumbus, bye bye, sayonara, it's gone. We'll get more to this downside a little bit later as we go through the cards. Gats is going to be your standard 2k counter. You're almost never going to play this. It's just going to be a 2k counter. Cavendish is quite interesting. So he can attack active characters with one Dawn attach, similar to Monkey D. Luffy, making him 7 cost attacker, which 7 cost 5 cost 7,000 power attacker, which is not that bad. The thing is, is that it doesn't really help with your game plan, and there isn't really that much space to fit in the deck. I have seen some people opt to use it. You can use it if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. But when attacking, you may rest your leader to KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less, then trash two cards from the top of your deck. Again, you know, if you're going up against Zoro or Law, I could see some people wanting to use it. In my opinion, you already have a good matchup against those babies. So with that being said, you don't really need Cavendish. But hey, be my guest. If you like Cavendish, you can include him. In my opinion, that's eh, enough. Kairos. Now this is where things get interesting. This is a card you definitely want to include. Let's go ahead and read Kairos. So if this character would were to be KO'd, you may rest your character... Sorry, you may rest your leader or your Colosseum instead. Colosseum being your stage card. So let's go ahead and go over our stage card. If your leader has Dress Rosa type, which Rebecca does, your characters that have the, the Dress Rosa type can attack characters on the turn that they are played. So again, you have Monkey D. Luffy that can attack active characters. If you play Monkey D. Luffy, you can attack with him. If you play your Kairos, you can attack with him only to active characters. This is something that's really nice because it allows you to control the board. Again, this is one of those reasons why this deck can kind of compete with Zoro and decks of that nature that really want to set up their board and then go for a big turn swinging with all their units. You can chip away at their board even though their characters stand active because you have access to the Colosseum. It's something to remember. Now, again, with Kairos, if Kairos was to be KO'd in any way, instead of him being KO'd, you can just tap your leader or you could tap your stage. The interesting thing is, if you have your stage, then you can actually protect him twice because you could just tap the stage one time and then you could tap your leader. 
there you go. Cairo stays on the board. He really, really likes to stick on the board. So uh, this is a card you are going to love playing and you want to see this as much as possible. Now, let's go ahead and go back to Orlumbus. What did Orlumbus do? You can KO one of your dress, or not, you can. You have to KO one of your dress Rosa type characters when you use his ability. It's a last line of text. We already discussed that. Well, now you can go ahead and just KO your Kairos. Kairos' ability will proc. You can tap your Colosseum. Kairos stays alive. All is good. You got all of the benefits with no downside. Or if you don't have your Colosseum, that's fine. Remember, your leader can't attack anyway, so Rebecca is always standing. Kairos is gonna die? Tap Rebecca, you're chilling. This is what makes it feel so damn good. The absolute synergy behind these cards are amazing. Let's go ahead and talk about Sabo. Fantastic card Sabo is. Five costs, 6,000 power, blocker on play. All of your characters cannot be KO'd by card effects, which is very nice until the start of your next turn, but he allows you to draw two trash two. Keep in mind, he could be an attacker. Five cost, 6,000 power. He could be an attacker. He's a blocker. He has counter. All of your cards can't be KO'd by card effects until your next turn, which is very strong. So if you're in a situation where you have that Monkey D. Luffy on board and then you play Sabo on your following turn, or if you already had that Monkey D. Luffy and you play that Sabo, Monkey D. Luffy can't be destroyed by any card effects, which is one way that people might want to get it off the board in terms of lowering its cost and then popping it with a jet pistol or things of that nature. Can't do that with Sabo. But then, he allows you to draw two trash two. I'm not going to harp on it too much because we've already discussed it. Again, you get to cycle through your deck. You get to dig a little bit deeper for that King Kong gun, for that Monkey D. Luffy, and then also trash two to enable that Monkey D. Luffy, to enable that King Kong gun. Suleiman is going to be a card that you don't really need to have to play if you don't want to. I'm not a fan of it. On play or when attacking, if your leader's dress roll, so you can give one of your opponent's character minus two and then trash one card from your deck. Again, of course, it makes sense, right? You know, it's accelerating our game plan, Ryan. You just said that that's something that's good. The stat line is lackluster, three cost, 4,000 power, and there's just not space. And what you'll see in the list, there, there's not space for it in the deck list. There's just way better cards that you want to fit in instead. Same thing goes with Chin Chow. Now, Chin Chow, it's cool, but because, uh, you know, he's one of my favorite characters in the limited amount of time that we've seen him. I just think that he's so cool. But unfortunately, he's not going to be seeing play in this deck. So, Chin Chow, you know, you seem cool. You have potential. But so far right now, you are not going to be seeing play in Rebecca. We have our vanilla 5 cost 7,000 power Trafalgar Law, which again, you won't be playing. And you have Hadruden, 6 cost 7,000 power with counter. Activate main, you may rest your leader. Give up to one of your opponent's characters minus four the, for this turn. Again, its stat line is lackluster because five cost 7,000 powers exist if you want a vanilla. Six cost 7,000 power is fine. But when you take a look at the other things that you could play, do you really want to play this? Especially if you're just playing it for the minus four, you could just play Orlumbus and have two other Dawn to play with. The KO effect is there, but then you could just mitigate that with your Kairos and things of that nature. For me, it's not really that worth it, especially because you also have to rest your leader in order to use Hadruden, which means that you cannot protect your Kairos. So definitely for me, Hadruden is a no. Bartolomeo is going to be very, very interesting gonna be a staple and is gonna be something that's played in a lot of black decks going forward because he's a blocker with 2k counter very versatile you can use him as counter from your hand and use him as a blocker if needed but he has three costs but definitely worth it because he's a blocker and has 2k counter leo or leo however you want to pronounce it is a card that is actually very very good you may rest your leader if your leader has a dress rosa type ko one of your opponent's characters with a cost of one or less then trash two cards from your deck this card is amazing when you go up against Zoro, when you go up against Law, right? You're going to be able to trash two cards from the top of your deck. Again, accelerating your game plan for the cost of just one Dawn, which is fine. But then you can also control the board by popping those easels, by popping those buggies, popping any of those one-cost bodies on board. Leo will be able to develop on the board. You get to pop something on your opponent's board. You get to accelerate your game plan by trashing two cards. And it's all for one Dawn. Leo's definitely going to be a four of. Rebecca is going to be your standard searcher. Look at the top three. Add one Dressrosa card to your hand. And then send the rest to your trash. Again, it's very nice that it's going to the trash and not to the bottom of your deck like other searchers. King Kong Gun, we already discussed. Bastardo is very interesting. So you could choose one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less and KO it. If you have 15 or more cards in your trash, which is very easy to do, Again, we've already discussed it. We don't need to harp on it too much longer. If you have 15 or more cards in your trash, choose up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less. 
um, with a cost of six or less instead of a character of four or less. So instead of KOing something that's four or less, you KO something that's six or less. With Orlumbus, you can effectively KO anything in the game because Orlumbus is minus four. If it's 10 cost, it goes to six. Bastardo can KO it. So this is going to be really, really nice removal. Barrier is also really nice because if you have 15 or more cards in your trash, then this is a Radical Beam. One Dawn, 4K counter. This is amazing, but again, it's not as free as Radical Beam because you need to have 15 cards in your trash. It really just puts things into perspective, right? The fact that Radical Beam you could just use for fun. I mean, not really because Radical Beam you have to go down to two life, but you, you guys get what I'm saying. I mean, I guess when you break it down, you know, it's easier to also get 15 cards in your trash with Rebecca. So you know what? It's fine. Barrier to one? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But effectively, Barrier is going to be your, um, your Radical Beam, right? If you decide to play it, um, one cost, 4k counter if you have 15 cards in your trash 15 or more cards we already talked about coliseum and then lastly the trafalgar law promo you are not going to be playing because quite frankly it is not all that good so that uh that is i was gonna say that are english is hard that is all of the dress rosa cards in op04 now let's go ahead and talk about some deck lists Alrighty, so there's two Rebecca deck lists that I want to show you guys that I've personally been using. Of course, feel free to tinker around with them, change the ratios to what you'd like, but I think that these two are pretty nice templates depending on how you want to play. Now, right off the bat, looking at the list, there's one card that I haven't discussed, right? I talked about all the Dressrosa cards, but what's that blue card? It's the only blue card that we're playing in Rebecca, and that is 3,000 Worlds. 3,000 Worlds is from OP03. It will be the only blue card that you are running in Rebecca. And if you don't have your 3,000 Worlds, again, you can go ahead and visit opsingles.com, discount code BBTCG for 5% off, and pick up your 3,000 Worlds, I believe, at the time of this recording. I believe that there's 13 left in stock. So... You're going to play four copies of this. You're going to play between three to four copies of this. All I'm saying is if you don't have it, go ahead and scoop them up. Of course, if you have other ways of getting it, then that's completely fine. I'm just letting you guys know if you want to support your boy, then you can. Um, but yeah, that's the only single outside of OP04 that you need to get. Everything else you can get within OP04. So if we start to break down the list here, um, it's very, very standard, very, very straightforward. You have your chump blocker and ideal. You have your Orlumbus, we talked about it, the minus four, the setup with Kairos, in which we're also playing four copies of. Four copies of Gats, who's gonna be our 2K counter. Four copies of Sabo to allow us to continue to dig through our deck and get our combo pieces, but also be a blocker and a potential attacker with counter. Such a good card. We have Bartolomeo, who's going to be another 2K counter and a blocker when needed. We have our Monkey D. Luffy, which we've talked in depth along with King Kong Gun, in which we're only running three copies of. For our stage, we're running three copies of, and I feel like that is the perfect ratio because it's going to be a card that you definitely want to see, but you don't want to see too many of it because you have to remember, you only need one, but you want to be able to see it enough. You're going to be digging through, drawing to it, Sabo. You're going to be drawing with your leader ability, all of those things. So I think three is a nice number to have it at. Then, of course, you have your Leo. We talked about it when we talked about Leo initially. Being able to pump pump <laughs> being able to pop anything that's one cost or less if you're going up against Zoro or law but it's also really nice to combo with or lumbus to start popping anything that are five costs or lower as well so it's just a really nice versatile card to have rebecca being your searcher also building up your trash tashigi being a 2k counter tashigi is very versatile here because she can also minus uh cost if needed but with that being said you're most likely going to use her as a 2k counter you could also substitute this for like Kaya or any other 2k counter, but I just like Tashigi in my build. The four 3000 worlds because this is going to be allowing you to spin back five costs or lower, and that card is most likely going to be Marco, right? Marco is still very annoying. Marco is still very, very relevant in this set. I'm talking about uh, the last set Marco, five cost Marco, um, the one that is just... A <sighs> pain in everyone's behind. Good thing we can spin him to the bottom of the deck with 3,000 worlds, which is why you're running that. Again, King Kong Gun, which is going to be for your offensive plays. You run three of them. Same reason why we run the stage. You want to see it. You want to see maybe two copies, ideally just one copy. If you need to see two, that's fine. Um, and so four is just a little bit too clunky, even with the trigger ability. 
So that's this list. This is why I think that it's really tight in order to run anything else. Again, I'm going to show you guys another deck list in which we sacrifice some of our ratios to play some other very strong cards in Rebecca. But this is a list that I found a lot of fun. It's something that I really enjoy and I highly recommend. I also recommend the second list, but let me go over the second list with you first and then I'll talk about which one you guys could decide that you want to play. Alrighty then, list number two. You guys notice anything different? There's a couple of things. So with this list, we sacrifice a little bit of defense by giving up our 2K counters, right? We drop our Tashigis or our Kayas, whatever you want to run. I like running Tashigi, as I mentioned. We drop that down from four copies to two, which will now allow us to play some other cards. We decide to up the King Kong gun because we want to be a little bit more aggressive. We definitely want to see the King Kong gun. So we update that from three copies to four. We drop one of the 3,000 worlds because we add two cards for removal. We go ahead and add in the Bastardo. We already talked about how Bastardo is going to allow us to basically remove anything off the board in combination with our Lumbus when we have 15 cards in our trash or list. And so this version is a lot more aggressive. This version is going to try, try to control the board a little bit more with your Bastardo, be a little bit more aggressive with the extra copy of King Kong Gun at the expense of having extra 2k counters and maybe being a little bit more defensive in that aspect so outside of that both lists i think are completely fine if one is better than the other i don't know of course you guys can always check out one piece top decks yourself but in my opinion i feel like you can't go wrong with either of these decks i would say play test them both it's also going to depend on matchups overall as well like if you're playing at a local level um you know whatever the matchups are you might want to tinker your deck to cater to that right if you're going up against of uh um zoros and laws and stuff like that maybe you might not need to run the bastardos right but maybe you're going up against a lot of yellow for example right and that big mom is really annoying you're not running red rock in this build because red rock costs six dawn and it really hampers the rest of your plays that plays that you could do for that turn you now have access to bastardo right so it's just things like that um it just kind of depends on matchups but i think that either list is completely fine Alrighty, my friends, a lot of you um, probably have already watched this, but if not, hey man, this is the complete guide. It's all in one. Let's go ahead and see how to pilot Rebecca going up against a leader that doesn't have a bunch of small bodies on the board. This is going to be Rebecca versus Whitebeard from the One Piece Championship that happened over in Asia during OP04. This happened in Japan. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll break down the plays and see how Rebecca came out on top. So as we see here, Rebecca is going first, adding one Dawn and immediately using the leader ability to go ahead and add the 2k counter to hand, trashing one Luffy. Now, if you take a look at his hand, he already has a Luffy in hand as well. So why add another one when he already has it? This particular build is running the Red Rock, it looks like, as well. So, again, it's up to you guys. If you want to run the Red Lock, the Red Rock, <laughs> the Red Lock, what is this, Blue Lock, but Red? <laughs> if you guys want to run the Red Rock, if you guys want to run the 3,000 Worlds, it is up to you. I think that after this, people have switched from the Red Rock to the 3,000 Worlds. But, again, feel free to run, to run whatever you want. Whitebeard's turn here. Gonna go ahead to Dawn, tap one to use Whitebeard Pirates. Looking at the top five, and he decides to take his Marco. The five costs Marco. We talked about it. We talked about how annoying that is. And now imagine if you had that 3,000 worlds ready in your hand right there. You could play it for less of a Dawn cost, which is something that people are gonna do. But here we go. We see Leo hey, coming out on board, and we're using it to go ahead and trash. We're also using our leader ability to search the top two. And we're going to go ahead and pick the Sabo up to hand. So we're building up our trash nicely. We're adding cards to our hand. We're using our leader ability. Things are feeling pretty good here. So now Whitebeard is going to go ahead and use Izo. Whitebeard is doing Whitebeard things continuously searching last turn we've seen the whitebeard pirates this turn we see the Izo. what does he decide to pull to his hand again whitebeard's a deck that's going to play a bunch of big bodies decides to add the thatch one of the biggest bodies in the deck feeling really good still having a ton of dawn to play with attaches three yeah rebecca you are not stopping 9k to the face this early on in the game you have so much life just add the extra card to your hand refresh now with all these cards in rebecca's hand she's unable to use her leader ability but it is completely fine 
Also, take a look at how the Rebecca player just has the uh, trash just laid out. So that way it's very easy to see what cards, or sorry, not, not just to see what cards, but to see how many cards are in your trash. Because remember, a lot of your cards become active once they reach a certain amount. But here comes Sabo, 5 cost, 6,000 power. And again, this is a nice unit to be able to swing into Whitebeard as well if needed. But again, going to be a blocker, allowing him to draw two cards. And then he's going to have to trash two. So look at all of the cards in his hand right now like rebecca's draw power is so good and that's why you can get around with playing lesser number of cards just because the consistency is so good in my opinion i think rebecca in terms of consistency itself i would have to say that rebecca is probably the second most consistent deck after um whitebeard right i'm not saying it's the best deck or second best deck period i'm just saying in my opinion I think it's the second most consistent deck just because of all the draw of power that you can utilize. You just cycle through your deck so fast. So he's going to go ahead, throw out his Tashigi, uh, throw out a Bastardo there, and passing it back over. Now keep in mind, Rebecca's completely fine with um, the Whitebeard player losing life every turn, right? Right now, Rebecca just wants to continue to build up the trash, already having the Luffy in hand. Now he can just play defense. He has a bunch of 2k counters. Go ahead and throw one. Sure, of course, he has four life. He can go ahead and just take it. But why when he just has an easy 2k counter? Whitebeard player decides to develop board, decides to go for the thatch. Again, huge body on board now. Still a ton of cards in hand. Unable to use Rebecca ability. But why do you need to when you could just pop off with all the cards that you already have in your hand? So what does Rebecca decide to do now? Bunch of cards in hand. Decides to swing with the Sabo. And like I said, guys, do not be scared of swinging with Sabo. Yes, Sabo is a blocker. Sabo is 5k, 6,000 power. Swing with him. We see Sabo swing into leader here. Let's see if Whitebeard player decides to take the hit. Or if the Whitebeard player decides to throw a card for counter. If we take a look in the hand, we see two aces, which means that doesn't have counter. But of course, we see the things like the radical beams, the guard points. So, and of course, they're not going to be active this turn because there's no active dawn. But then there's the Atmos as well as, I believe, a diamond Jozu in hand as well as an Otama. So a bunch of counters should he decide. Does he decide to throw one of the 1k counters? He decides to take the hit. Going down to two life and out comes Monkey D. Luffy, seven cost. So again, this is your boss card. You guys remember what it does. If not, hey man, it's a complete guide. You can go ahead and go back to that section. If you just jump to this section, go to the Monkey D. Luffy section. So here comes Ace. Ace hits the board. Minus 3,000. And Sabo's gonna die because, yeah, you're definitely dead. Minus 3,000. Ace is gonna swing into face here. And here comes counters. 2k with the 2k and a 1k getting him over to 8k, making the ace attack null and void. Thatch is gonna swing into lead, and we're gonna go ahead and take that. So it's three life to one life now, passing it back over to the Rebecca. And so now the double attack with King Kong Gun isn't as threatening just because, okay, you know, white beard. He's going to take life all the time, double hit, all that thing. But you have to remember, it's not just the double attack that's deadly. It's a fact that you get plus 6,000, okay? So remember that. You, you don't always have to optimize and pinpoint and get that two exact life. Of course, if you can, great. But that's not the only way to play it, right? Just, just putting that out there. So Dawn is now there. Let's see what he decides to do. There's a lot of things that he could do here. Again, look at all the cards in the hand. This is something that you're going to be... Uh, it's going to be happening a lot when you're playing Rebecca. So he's just panning out his Dawn, trying to decide what line of play that he wants to do. Nice close-up by the camera people here. We see the 2k counters, the Tashigis, the Rebeccas. We see the Red Rocks. We see the Bastardo, and I believe that's a Kairos in hand as well. So if he wants to go ahead and spin something to the bottom of the deck, he can. He has a bunch of defense. I'm sure he has a bunch of cards in trash right now. But decides to go for the Rebecca. Going to look at the top three, add one to hand and trash two. Decides to add the Ito so he's able to get the blocker in hand now as well. So that's going to be really nice, which is always nice to go up against Whitebeard. Always nice to have blockers. Decides to play it. 
playing it safe, right? Well, why play too aggressively? Go ahead, play that blocker. Still has Dawn to play with, but now playing that blocker lowers his hand size, allowing him to use his leader ability, adds another 2k counter to hand, adds another card to his trash. So his trash is good. So now he's there, he's counting. Again, as a Rebecca player, you want to make sure you're always counting how many cards are in your trash so you know what's going to be live, what's going to be active, what plays you can do. So, uh, continuing to think through here, playing with his Dawn. Again, he has a bunch of 2k counters. I don't think he's going to play the Bartle here. He could if he wants another blocker, but instead he's going to go face. Now, in this situation, a lot of Whitebeard players typically would just take the life because they're just like, oh, well, I'm going to lose this life anyway um, on my at the end of my next turn, so I might as well take the hit, right? But then, you know, there's a world where they can nine beard. And then if they want a nine beard, then they're not going to want to take the hit because nine beard is going to allow them to take to, to stave off that pressure, right? It's going to allow them to keep that one life. So attacking with this is actually really good because now it's going to make him have to drop cards out of his hand or he's going to be in lethal range with, with this Luffy. It's going to be very devastating. So what your player has to think. In other situations, you know, it's a very easy, oh yeah, you know, I have my nine beard, it's fine, I'll counter out of it, but you gotta think because this Luffy can restand. So we see the radical beam, we see the 2k counter, and look at what he does. He's gonna throw back seven, and now this Luffy can go ahead and restand. So seven cards going back. I believe, and you can send them back in any order. So he orders them back to how he wants, restands the Luffy, and passes. So again, this is something you could do. If you want to continue to exert pressure, you can. However, you can restand the Luffy. Why is this important? You can only attack cards that are rested unless you're playing the Cavendish, unless you're playing the Luffy, unless you're playing cards that allow you to attack other active cards, which Whitebeard doesn't. This is going to be completely safe, and Whitebeard's not running things like Jet Pistol and things like that, um, at least in this time of the meta. Um, and so he's thinking, okay, I could just easily restand my Luffy, and I'm chilling because sure, I could, I can't refresh him, but now that I've restood him, I can still attack with him next turn. So it's kind of circumventing that downside of the Luffy ability there. So now it's over the Whitebeard player. The board is looking quite scary because there's one blocker on board. There's still three life. He goes to swing with his ace. He decides to take the hit and he gets another blocker to hand. Thatch swings. He decides to block, gets another card in trash, which is beautiful. Nine Beard comes out. Nine Beard pumps up leader. He swings at leader, but he already had the 2k counters chilling. He gets two 2k counters there. Very easy to get over that 8k swing boosting him up to nine and the turn passes back. So now the nine beard is on board, of course. So again, he doesn't take the life, but now he still has one Dawn open. So you as a Rebecca player, you're instantly thinking Radical Beam or you're thinking of Guard Point, right? Like it's just standard straightforward. Everybody knows that when you're going up against red, if one Dawn is left open, it's one of those two cards. So you just got to play around it. So now what does Rebecca decide to do? Remember, your leader can't attack, so the only real attacking bodies this turn is going to be the Luffy. Now, Luffy can swing twice. Remember, as long as you have seven cards in your trash, Luffy is going to be able to swing twice. So, let's see what he decides to do. Attaching one Dawn to the Luffy. Luffy is now 8k. He is swinging into leader. Why is he doing this? Because he's going to try to bait two 2k counters out of hand, or he's going to try to bait out the guard point. Remember, he can always restand and pump up later. So let's see what he decides to do. So here is the first swing. Does Whitebeard decide to take the 8k? There is Atmos. And sorry, I have low IQ. I completely forgot <laughs> that the Whitebeard is pumped up because of the nine beard on board to so just completely ignore what i just said i am low iq he just swung 8k into 8k let's get back to it hey i do this all in one take you feel me let's keep it going all right so that one down onto luffy swinging 8k into 8k and here is red rock so hey man to be fair if that was 3000 worlds he wouldn't be able to hit the nine beard so the red rock pops off nine beard goes to the bottom of the deck hey man again I just gave you guys my two lists. If you guys want to run the Red Rock, you can run the Red Rock. He uses the Red Rock, sends a Nine Beard to the bottom. Gonna go ahead and leader ability here because the cards in hand are six or less. Again, loading up the trash. 
gonna go ahead and play another blocker blocker playing very defensive here once again sending back seven cards to the bottom of the deck to restand that luffy to keep him safe so the thatch can attack him so the ace can attack him and so that leader can't attack him and i believe he's just gonna pass here so he has a blocker he has two more cards in life so now whew, Whitebeard is on borrowed time. What is he going to do here? He's probably thinking, I, I gotta win quick because a double swing for Luffy is definitely coming, right? I'm not too sure how many cards are left in the trash of the Rebecca player, but here comes Izo. One cost, gets a search. What does he search for? Oh, I see the Marco. The Marco wouldn't be a bad pick. And there is the Marco. Gonna be able to get a blocker on board, which will feel very nice trying to protect against that Luffy double swing. Ace is going to swing into leader here. Easy counters, 2k as well as the Leo. So that's going to be 3k counter there. So now he has a swing. There's only two other potential swings this turn. Obviously, some decks some uh, decks decide to play Rush Luffy. Obviously, there's Ace. But he decides to add a 1 to Thatch. Thatch is going to swing to lead. He takes this hit. Again, another blocker to hand. So he has blockers. He has 2k counters. Now he just has to worry about the last attack from Whitebeard. He knows that Whitebeard's probably going to want to play the Marco, so that's going to be four Dawn. So that's two Dawn onto the, um, the leader here, so that's going to be 8k, meaning that he's going to have to ditch two 2k counters to keep this alive or throw away his blocker. Which one is he going to do, right? In a situation like this, you could just throw away the blocker because it's like, okay, like what if he does have the Luffy, right? What, what if he did have the Luffy? But let's go ahead and look how many Dawn he has. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so if he did have the Luffy, then he probably wouldn't have. Ooh, what is this angle? Wait, that, that's a clean angle. He goes ahead and takes the hit. Here comes Marco and he passes. So yeah, obviously not playing the Luffy. He knows he wants to play the Marco. Marco hits the board. He leaves two Dawn open. And again, you have to think about the Radical Beams. You have to think about the um, the guard points here. So Whitebeard is, all of a sudden, he brought it back. It's a nail biter, right? Because now if he could survive, if he could survive this turn, Whitebeard can win. So what ends up happening? Bass Stardo. So Bastardo gets rid of the Marco. So brings the Marco back, attaches all the remaining Dawn to Luffy. He's going to have to throw a bunch of counters here. Guard point. 2k counter. 2k counter. 1k counter. Sends back exactly 7. Restand. Swing again. He wins. So... That is how you could utilize Bastardo. That's how you could utilize Red Rock if you decide to run the Red Rock. That is Rebecca versus Whitebeard. Um, that's just one example. Obviously, deck lists have changed since then. But this is just an example of how the deck wants to play. And again, how you can utilize your Luffy to close out game. And so, my friends, that's it. That is the complete Rebecca guide. I know, another long video. It's always a ton of fun when I make these types of videos because I feel like I'm generally going to be able to help people out, get people excited about new decks. And so for me, it's always a blast, even though it takes a while to put these out. I mean, these videos are almost an hour long. So um, I hope somebody watches all of it. I'm hope that e I hope that even if you just skip through to the timestamps to the points that you want, I hope that you got some value out of it. And if you did... The least you could do is subscribe. It's completely free. Like I mentioned, my goal is to hit 4K by the release of OPO4. So if you want to support me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It'll mean a lot and it'll encourage me to want to continue to put up more of these for not just this set, but sets going forward in the future. So I know that you guys actually enjoy the content. And so with that being said, thank you so much to all of my new subscribers. The channel has been growing like crazy as of late. So I want to say thank you so much to all my new subscribers. I want to say thank you so much for all of my old subscribers as well. All of my day ones. I appreciate every single one of you. So with that being said, I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you guys had fun watching this video. I hope I made your day a little bit better. And with that being said, have a good day. Take care. Peace.